And let's transform. She has lifelink. That is a lot of damage. So if I'm right, there is a chance we will deal insane amount of damage and kill him. Is that how it works? Hello everyone, it's Love here and today we are playing the highest win rate meta version of Mardu Vampires. And I'll tell you man, we went those results and we were never, not a single time on the play. All of the games were played on the draw and we still won like super crazy. So there will be some cool additions to the deck. This card with name that cannot be spoken, uh, that is great at sacrificing everything that is targeted, Soul Cardon and the Blood Letter of Aklazot. Uh, this is the card that you will see in action. You will see how insanely devastating this can be. So with that being said, let's go into action. I know you want to see some vampire shenanigans, so yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and have fun. The Harvester, because it's mo the most efficient play right now. This will hurt a little bit. Let's see how they want to capitalize on this. There are multiple ways. Uh, and it, All right. I mean, it doesn't do too much. Like, it just creates a spirit token, basically. I think, of course, okay, but we'll just go with the with the value. Do I want to defend against this? I think I take this one damage and see what happens next. So it's out. Yeah, just... Honestly, if they had black mana for this and Esper, they could just get it back. But, you know, it's it's big investments in the end. We could go double... Oh, I think this is the play, right? We attack. I think we start with this, and when we saw what was this fading hope? Maybe, or maybe the the phase out spell. I think that might be it. I think we go like this. Painland hurts, but that was a huge hit. It will. Man, what's up with this? Oh, they they want to do something but we can play the baron even if they phase out or fading hope it it's still kind of okay and that's that will be the one of their last cards right they will have four cards in total they play a lamp and that's three that's not too much so indeed they phase out and they tr will try to f to you know just kill us but we have lifelinker with eager drinker like look at this that was one turn and i know it was a little bit slow but that, those differences are, you know, difference between just winning by one uh, life and losing by one life. So very often you just need to try to scale the most. Five damage. No blocks. This is flying? No. Alright. That should maybe help a little bit. Are there any cool creatures? So we don't have enough to kill him on this turn, right? Unless we play this as a blocker, but they might phase it out. Because we could activate the bivac, it will be 3-3, three, three. so it's what? 5-9 and 5 more. Yeah, it's not enough. This also has a lifelink. I would guess that he has something. Yeah, probably sleep out the back. And they will phase out the Baron, probably. That's okay. Let's go like this. Let's see if they phase out the Baron. Alright, they're going for this play. That is still a lot of damage. We lose the buff, but we'll just get more. We can go... This into this and that's more lightning and also th th they will get the counters so as you can see even though they got the baron they are getting behind on board and now they cannot kill us i believe like they need to pump a creature and also get rid of the drinker so this is getting hard for them and then we can go evangelist and use battle cry right every other attacking creature plus one yeah, and the bats have flying, just in case. The soul cardon, probably the least impactful right now. 
but it can put some counters, so it won't be... I guess we will activate the Ox, that's more damage, and we need to go white. And not enough damage, that's all I know. I will risk it. We have three lifelink a turn, and we can get it four if we put a, a counter here. Man, he really is good at those one mana spells, but I don't think that's enough. We should be able to outscale him. We won't kill him on the next turn, but I think in two turns we might. If we get a way to get a blood token, we can just kill this. Definitely not. Hmm. I think this is better, right? Yeah, let's start like this. This will be very, very close, man. Uh, let's get rid of probably this, right? Because it has ability. Nothing we have matters, so let's just go for this. And that means we can pump our creatures. We can attack with basically everything, man. Especially that we don't want to block. I can see some counter plays because this can be used to, uh, you know, phase out. And uh, this has mana, so we can attack. This has a battle cry, so we kinda want to attack with it. And then we can use the harvester to kill it if if it blocks anything. Uh, the problem is that they might save it, but we still lifelink enough to survive, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they will have a phase out effect, but we need to take this risk. They have it, right? Of course they do. So this will be a 5-5, five five, alright? Not phase out, but basically the same thing. If we activate it... Oh! We can actually go for it on this turn. You know what? Let's go. And now we can activate extra creature. He's at 8, we are at 9, we have lifelinkers and mana creatures, and the evangelist really contributes to a lot of power. It's all attacking creatures, including the ox. And that might be our winning play. Sure. He needs to play some blockers. That's an interesting play. Is he... giving up? Like, I think that kills him. Let's activate the creature. That's a nice draw, but we probably want to pressure it more. What? We don't have the right mana. Oh my god, we don't have the right mana. I just realized. Took me a while. Yeah, this is my only white mana. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> Alright, I see, I see. We don't have Harvester, so we'll just cycle this and see if we can get hit, uh, hit something that matters. I mean it matters. It matters quite a lot. So we will target this guy for the lifelink. Now we will exile something that is a creature. And we'll use it on the menace creature. And that's the most damage. Of course that will be Lifar, but you know, we are trying to make it in the perfect way. Well, this 4-4 did a lot and he aimed for 2 turn Lifar. So of course we can now sacrifice this and deal extra 5 damage. So yeah, he would be at minus 7 anyway. Well, this was absolutely uh, overthought, but we did the job, see? Right, on the draw, so very bad at magic. Uh, this is definitely a hand where you want to be on the play because it's super aggressive. We kinda need this. Oh, that's so bad. We will see. I see some options. We probably want to spam a lot of vampires so we can hit the Baron. We need to overwhelm them. We don't have cavern, so make this... We are so good at magic, man. I <laughs> mean, so good. Let's go for the Harvester, because uh, this is uncounterable, so we just want to go, you know, with the highest power creature. If we play two of them, one of them is uncounterable, the second one can be ma made disappear. Or whatever you call it. And now we need to fish for all the removal. So. First we attack and see the reaction. Uh, in vampire decks, 
uh, dealing this damage is much more impactful than in other decks. Smite is perfect answer, so they're really good at this. And I mean, let's start with the with the Epicure. I don't care about life total in this matchup, so we can just go with it. Let's see if they are going to make this appear. If I do the opposite, they can counter this. And let's go like this. This one cannot be countered. So they need to keep playing removal and sweepers. All of their counter spells are absolutely useless this game, unless we multi spell, which can be a thing. But they probably will. we want to pressure them so much that they won't have open mana. Faithful Mending. So this is a mind breaker deck. Generally, mind breaker decks have the best win rate right now. Uh, but it's not perfect, so they kind of want to play and go for this one huge hit. That's actually really good for us because it means a full turn for us. And we don't really care about, you know, what he's doing. He needs double Jace anyway, which means at least two turns of full mana usage. Alright, we need to be smart about Socialite. So let's think, this is the huge turn, we need to capitalize as much as possible. So we attack first, then we socialize for 2 mana. So I think we attack with only one creature. That's unfortunately a sun for turn. So you know what? We probably want to hit as hard as possible on this turn. That's a very good tap. And of course we pay here with, let's say, white mana. So that's maximum damage on this turn and also enough pressure to force him to, you know, sunfall. If he doesn't have it, he will die. So he needs a land into sunfall or he loses the game. That's a tap land. All right. And on the next turn, I probably want to convoke two mana, so the third one is from Cavern of Soul. Oh man, he's actually going for this. So he has Jace, and I think he lost. So right now we just need to super scale. We absolutely don't care about this damage. Yeah, he's desperate. He 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 had the tap <laughs> That's Batman. So if we hit this, we probably will kill him, right? It's 9 damage and 8, 17. That's good enough. So we don't convoke anything, and I will manual tap just to make sure that we don't miss anything here. And that was a leap. Told you, you need to set up the board so you win if they don't sunfall, but still deal maximum damage on, on the last turn as well. Well, that was close, but as you can see, Mindbreaker is pretty vulnerable to this kind of aggro. Alright, again on the draw, we are not very good at magic so far. Uh, let's go with the caverns because they give perfect mana with no drawback and also countering spell. Oh, sorry. Like, I wonder why do you ask me for this stuff? That's a good way to start the damage. And then the harvester, right? We probably want to cast caves as, as late as possible. Well, this is not perfect. It's insane how much Celestia Agra I'm getting when I'm playing this vamp those vampires. I've been playing today with Azorius Control and I've only seen Atraxa and Monorad. Alright, let's see. So we have a lot of blood tokens, we can remove whatever they play, but it will cost us the Harvester, which is high value card. So not great, even if we kill it. If they play a dog and copy the cargo, they will probably win with card advantage. Yep, that's the good play and that's probably game. We might try to cheat it, but if they have good draws, it's so much value, man. It's so much value. And we want to make sure that we get the maximum value. Alright, let's get rid of the Weaver of Harmony. But the problem right now is that I should probably attack first. Maybe he would block. But he could block with the Weaver, and that means I lost the creature for free. So yeah, probably not the best anyway. We attack. I wonder if they will trade. They don't? Sure. They probably don't want to. And I think we go like this. 
It's a little bit better overall. And man, we have some blood token. <laughs> and we actually have already four. At five, we can transform the blood leather or whatever the name is. Right, six cards. Two more than he should. Another weaver. Of oh my god. Man, that's the problem. You basically need to remove every creature they have. And if they hit removal, like, they can set up the weaver forever. And when they double each one of their cards, it's just brutal, man. Alright. Not the best turn of my, of my life. And now we lose. <laughs> I think now we lose. Because uh, the scaling he has is insane. You need to basically remove all of their pieces. If they have at least two pieces together, it's it's getting absolutely ridiculous. And I will draw a card. What can you do? And I think they can copy the audacity because it's enchantment source and they probably can draw two cards. And as you can see, one weaver. And don't worry, they won't miss it game makes a stop for them and highlights the Weaver of Harmony so they know what is the ability that stopped the trigger and this is something it has to be Henrika I mean that's the only way bats are better Alright, so, we sacrifice a creature, and this will be the buff. Because it doesn't get the buff from the Baron, but it has flying, so this one has to attack. And that's a Weaver, at least, something. I mean, there is maybe a chance we can raise them, but when they have so many cards, they will just, you know, play naturalis into whatever into whatever and you just cannot keep up with this kind of deck Kalix. even Kalix is super expensive on the mana which in standard means 3 mana but you can see that they have so much scruff I know sometimes you play one it's probably the worst one drop right now for them can we make it work somehow can we make it work man they don't lose an life, right? You know what? Let's try because I remember from the actual rules when you deal damage, then it provides the loss of life, right? But loss of life is not a damage, so that was always, you know, the thing with those cards. I think we keep it for the cycling. And let's transform. She has lifelink. That is a lot of damage. So if I'm right, there is a chance we will deal insane amount of damage and kill him. Is that how it works? I wonder. Let's see. Is that a loss of damage? Yep. I mean, that... That was educational and fun at the same time. I guess we won after all, but honestly, I lost faith like midway. This is another game on the draw. Man, it's insane. I actually was never on the play with this deck. I mean, like literally not a single time in history of magic. We'll go with Epicure. Uh, one drop is insane at giving you this small tempo advantage. You already start things, you know? And if our opponent lets us hit him, I still don't know how it works. If, okay, put on each other. All right, so we want to hit first. Man, it takes me forever, but I will learn at some point how it works. <laughs> Let's go with this one because it's untapped. And I think this is the most power. It will also uh, force our opponent to react faster. And even if they remove it instantly, we still get the counter. So this is the play that always has some little upside, even if they trade perfectly. So yeah, uh, the counter spell, of course, can prevent it, but they don't play blue mana, which I'm not super surprised. And we still got the counter. It's, of course, great for our opponent, but you know, it is what it is. And that's really good for him. So far, perfect. Uh, other cave, so it's some kind of cave deck. 
interesting and uh, very bad draw and for this turn we need to go like this let's go bloodcaster into epicure this is the most power we can go for and we create some blood tokens for the future i don't think we'll get to five blood tokens all right so they draw a card they life gain four so 23 and they set up for the next turns, which is really good. And we are doing only lands, six lands in the 11 cards, way above what you want. I mean like super way above. So let's go with the top land that has no upside. Better, that's, that's better. I would love to cast run together with this. If we played, oh man, if we played this, this would be the target. We want the tap land on the next turn, we can attack with it. I think we go with the run because it's less threatening if they don't know the rest of our hand. And they're at 20, so we are doing amazingly. This is what happens when you are on the draw. Seven freaking time in a row. Which for aggro deck means that you you basically shouldn't have a w positive win right? The aggro decks get all the power by being on the play. Uh, so every time you are on the draw, this game is more like I hope I can get to fifty percent win rate. Right? So the next game on the play just you know rockets me into a winning streak. That's how we play the deck basically. Interesting. They didn't really play anything. They don't have any kind of demolition field. We could just go with the fortress but we can also cycle blood token i think this is really important that we get it into the battlefield and right now we can start sa sacrificing everything he targets so that's meaningful all right first damage acquired and i think we won't hit white probably but you know what let's let's still go i think that's a good auto tap we might hit something like socialite and i don't see double white yet. told you <laughs> some decent decisions on our part but can we beat being on the draw are we good enough i mean that's a lot of power you, you can see this we could start sacrificing but i just don't want to do it all right they can get all the mana so let's see it it feels like they have a sunfall and they will play it on the next turn but yeah oh i have a bad feeling about this one <laughs> you know what listen <laughs> listen <laughs> we'll go like this because i got scared of the sunfall and i want to start draining him a little bit and we only lose one damage in the end, right? Oh, interesting. Oh, maybe they they lack the fifth land. I really feel it's it's a sunfall. If not, we should be able to just deal what twelve damage, and with the fortress, it's lethal. So I mean, maybe, man. <laughs> but what are they doing? What is the strategy here? I don't know, man, but I take the win. All right, this will be a rough opening. I think we will lose this, but let's see. <laughs> let's see. I think on the draw, this is not a winning hand, but we'll try to make it work. Do we want... Yeah, I think we start with this guy. And we'll just start with the Harvester. It's most interaction, probably. So, no. On the draw, two draw feels so slow in standard. Man, it feels like you are already out of the game nearly. But we'll try to make it work. And that's Celestia Enchantments. Yeah, it's probably too late. Uh, vampires, probably. This doesn't make much sense. We have to go for the Harvester. There is a chance they cannot go above, uh, you know, uh, the Harvester. So they cannot attack, at least. Do you create a blood token? Wait, wait, wait. How do you work? It's part of the cost. So I think it works like this, but yeah, it's probably out of the game. Our opponent just going super hard on those things. We, we have to try it. And I guess we could go for the cordon. 
we probably will have to. But can we get back into this game? Probably not. We don't have removal for Kalix, which means they will scale like absolute crazy craziness. <laughs> uh, so I think this is the play. The Cauldron is the only choice at you know getting some extra value. We can get rid of the Kami as well. But they will just play Audacity, attack with this, and probably just play Naturalis into Dog into Dog, something absolutely crazy like this. Here it comes. F4-4, easy. And without removal, it's, it's harsh, man. I told you. They don't have the dog, though. That only a 7 freaking fight. Honestly, even on the play, this would be a hard matchup. Yep. Everything with audacity. I just played a 1-1 one -one this game. <laughs> That's it. And what can we do more? I think I can kill the naturalist, but... Man, the advantage won't stop. Like, it will be like this forever. Uh, we can, and we also need to waste the counter on the Eco Drinker. So, I mean, let's go. Oh, it has to tap as well. So, no point in attacking, right? I could try to kill Kalix on the next turn, but it will be so late, man. Whatever we do, it's just bad. Yeah, I think on the play it would be much more viable, but right now it's it's just probably not. So, I think it should work, let's see. Because first we create blood token because it's part of the cost and then the effect triggers. So, but you can you can, you know, go super fancy mode. You won't he, uh, kill a 7/5 with trample that puts counters every turn and also draws cards every turn. I mean, we will have exactly the same situation. Well, that was fun. And what can we do right now? Uh, let's pretend we don't have Caverns of Souls. Alright, I should just play the mount. <laughs> I forgot you... Oh, it's Chorus. Okay, okay, so it's fine. So it's fine. I forgot you need to pay life for any color of mana. Bro, what are those times? I have every color of mana and it also doesn't come tapped. Like it, and it also prevents counter spells. Like, this is how we roll now. Uh, so, this one will be interesting. We can go with the Bloodcaster, which is not too much power, or just Thrill Seeker and risk the removal. They will probably have it. Uh, but still, this way we at least get some. <laughs> yeah, I understand the sentiment, man. Uh, so even on the draw we are winning, man. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the games, we had a lot of fun, I definitely didn't play the deck fully optimally, I have uh, actually while editing I've noticed that in the Celestia game I could keep, uh, you know, using the Harvester ability by Cauldron on every vampire I had, so I could still try it, but I think the 7 toughness on the... Calyx was a little bit too much anyway, but you know, before you make a comment, I know, listen, I know, and the power of those vampires seems to be much better than before, I think the Cavern of Souls really helped both against control, obviously, but also just to fix the mana base, you basically have 8 lands here that has no drawback and give any color of mana, so that's insane. Uh, the vampires itself also got nice addition with this uh, Presidio guy and the fact that you can sacrifice everything normally you just don't want to do it uh, you do it when something is targeted usually this has to be targeted but if your opponent plays cut down some kinds of weird sweepers you can usually just go around it and if they sunfall don't forget to sacrifice each vampire anyway because that makes the sunfall token much smaller and uh, with the blood letter of Aklazot man this card we have we have tested it, we know how it works, and I have to say, in some aggro decks, it's great finisher, because doubling your, you know, full board uh, is insane, especially that you can combo it with the free seeker, so you can attack with something, then sacrifice it, and both of the triggers will basically get doubled with the blood letter. So this is definitely a good addition, great finisher, 
Uh, after playing Henrika, man, I miss the card. It, it, this card is so great, especially with like bats from the Evangelist. We only play one, but it really contributed. When you add this together with the Lord, you know, thing uh, on like Ecor Drinker or something small, even man, this three attack with Lifelink suddenly makes full difference. So I really like the deck. I think it's a very fun deck that has good results and. I mean, you can ladder with it while also having fun. So that's something that uh, I think is appreciated in current standards. So you don't need to, you know, grind mono white, mono red, which are absolutely boring by now. And the mana base is interesting. I don't like the caves personally, but you know, we, we get all the colors and yeah. I don't think there is much to talk about it. Uh, tell me in the comments if you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more vampires. I think right now it's one of the most interesting aggro tribes. Uh, it, it was similar in the last set, but with addition of bloodletter and also the sacrifice thing. I think you have just a lot of possible plays that are very, very fun. So, uh, oh, and the Soul Cardon is really great because it both exiles and it gives all the cool abilities. Don't forget this is also activated ability, so suddenly you can basically fling every vampire that you have that gets doubled. So even if you cannot attack into your opponent, which might happen against white aggro decks because they scale a little bit stronger, uh, you can just try to kill them and finish them off at like 10 life or something, which is crazy. So. I really enjoyed it. I think that's a good laddering choice if you want to be aggressive. And yeah, thank you for watching guys as always and see you tomorrow.